What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today's video, we're talking about where do bass go in the winter and the best ways to catch them. Winter bass fishing. It is quiet, it is peaceful, it can be cold, but you have the chance or the opportunity to catch some of the biggest fish of the entire year. You know, winter bass fishing for me, sure you have to uh, kind of brave the elements, right? You get those rainstorms, those snowstorms coming in, but nothing will warm you up quicker on the water than setting the hook and just reeling in big bass. You know, you can catch so many fish because they congregate to certain pieces of isolated pieces of cover. We're gonna talk about that. But winter bass fishing, for the most part, it's quiet, uh, it's peaceful. There's not a lot of boat traffic on the water. Most of your uh, recreational type boats and uh, personal watercrafts have been shelved for the winter. And uh, a lot of the bass boats, you know, we've talked about it in prior videos. A lot of the bass guys, they're up in the tree stand, they're chasing, chasing uh, deer or they're chasing waterfowl. So you get to really fish those key spots and that's really important because as these water temps drop, as the air temps drop and these fish really kind of start slowing down for winter time, they're gonna pull to the best pieces of cover on the best spots on the lake. So it can fish fairly small, but when you're the only boat out on the lake, it doesn't matter. So today we're gonna cover the different types of fisheries. You guys, we know that we do these seasonal videos basically every quarter, or every you know spring, summer, fall, winter, every year to kind of help you guys along through that transition period to give you guys confidence to get out on the water and then once you're out there, be successful. So we're gonna talk about the different types of fisheries, and then we're gonna talk about uh, the best baits for, uh, for this time of the year. You know, for the most part, I like to power fish this time of the year. We like to throw moving baits. In recent videos, I've talked about triggering fish versus fooling, fooling fish, you know, getting them to react versus letting them study your bait and then deciding to eat it, um, but we're gonna talk about the different ways to uh, kind of go through that and the different processes that, that, that I use or that I do. You know, it's been, it's been great. We did those buyer's guides early on in this holiday season, and we're gonna start those up, you know, to kind of go with that Tackle Warehouse sale. So starting next video, we'll jump right back into those buyer's guides uh, seven days a week to get you guys the best information uh, during the sale so you guys can benefit from that and save some save some money. Those videos are awesome because you can send those links to your loved ones and make sure that they buy you the correct stuff or the stuff you want for the holidays. So that will be starting next video. Getting back into that winter bass fishing. You have ponds, you have highland and lowland reservoirs, you have river systems or delta systems, and then you have natural lakes. And depending on the different types of fisheries, the fish go to different places on the, on the lake, so, or on the pond. So let's start off talking about pond fishing. Because it's, it's the smallest size, right? It's, it's typically the easiest. Uh, and we have a lot of subscribers, a lot of followers that, that love pond fishing, myself included, or are shore-based anglers. So ponds. It's really, really simple. As the water temp cools, as your air temps cool and that winter kind of sets in, those fish are going to pull to the deepest part of the pond. So typically, if there's a dam on your pond, that's gonna be the deepest water. So a lot of your fisheries, your, your pond fisheries, uh, if you if you hike down the dam or you go go to the dam and you fish out there that's where that water is going to be deeper okay now deep is all relative depending on how deep the pond is right so you know say your average depth on your pond is anywhere from 10 to 12 feet but then all of a sudden it drops off to 15 feet those fish are going to pull to that hole that deeper area now maybe that's 20 or 30 or 40 feet deep those fish are still going to pull to that area 
Uh, but it's important to know that if there's a chunk rock or rock or some side of, some kind of hard cover, they're gonna pull to that area in that deeper area. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, you know, if you're a fairly shallow pond, those fish are still gonna pull to cover. So maybe your pond is just a flat, maybe bowl, like maybe six to eight feet deep. You know, those fish might pull to the only lay down that's fallen into the pond, or maybe there's a dock on the pond. Those fish are gonna pull to that. So a lot of those fish are gonna, are gonna go to the deeper water. And if there's not any relatively deeper water, they're gonna pull to the hard pieces of cover. It really is that simple. Highland and lowland reservoirs. You guys have heard it for years now. Your highland reservoirs, your lowland reservoirs, they can fish a lot like each other. Typically your highland reservoirs have your long river arms, lots of coves and cuts and points and secondary points. Uh, typically your dam is fairly short, but really tall, basically damming up a canyon or a river. A lowland reservoir is gonna have a lot bigger body, main body, more of a bowl type body, a lot less arms and uh, secondary points and creek channels, that sort of stuff. You're gonna have more humps and saddles out on the main body. Those fish, <clears throat> Highland Reservoir fish, main lake points, okay? Now the key to these main lake points is not necessarily fishing the point. So you have a point that separates two arms, right? You got a point that separates two river arms. If you can find a main lake point that has rock on it, rock piles, pea gravel, chunk rock, whatever, something hard, any type of rock is better than no rock. If it doesn't, if you don't have any rock, where that point comes out, and breaks off to the main channel, the main river channel, those fish are gonna hang right on the edge. Okay, they're gonna come up throughout the day, they'll come up to feed and they'll back off to that edge or they're gonna be around that rock pile. But for the most part, those fish are gonna be off the side. So a lot of guys miss that. They'll, they'll take their side imaging and they'll drive right up the main, main point, right? But those fish are gonna be hanging off that, that lip, that break on the outside edges, okay? Deep water access is key this time of the year. It provides those fish a sense of escape, and it also provides those fish uh, sta more stable water temps. The deeper water kind of doesn't, doesn't uh, fluctuate as much as the surface temps or the, the shallower water. Okay, so, so main lake points, another key spot on these types of fisheries, when you run up the arm, and you're following that, that, that uh, river channel or that creek channel, wherever that channel swings, that deep water swings and touches shore. Typically it's a bluff wall. Wherever that is, fish there. There will be fish there. It's, it's, uh, it's just one of those things this time of the year, those fish right there where that current hits that bluff wall or that, that area, closest to shoreline, those fish are gonna be right there. Now pay attention, this time of the year, <clears throat> no matter what type of fishery you're in, typically you don't get nearly as many bites as you would in the, uh, in the spring or the summer, right? Everything is kind of slowed down. That whole ecosystem, everything is just kind of slow, right? You guys feel it. When you're out and you're cold, you don't wanna be running around. Same thing underwater footage we see the bait fish slow down the the predator fish slow down you know your bass your catfish uh, a lot just everything that whole ecosystem slows down so those fish don't like to move a lot or cover a lot of distance to feed so if you can have that channel swing that's bringing food and nutrients to them that's perfect they can they can uh hide and ambush from those the, the rock, the bluff wall, and 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 jet out and in feed. But pay attention to all your bites that you get. Every bite is a key to the puzzle, and it's really important to put that puzzle together quickly 
because once you find these fish, especially this time of the year, once you find where these fish are, you will be able to catch them for the next couple of months. They're not going anywhere unless some crazy storm comes in or cold front or, or lots of water. Um, otherwise, those fish are gonna stay put and you can catch them for the next couple of months. So once you can put this puzzle together and find these fish, you guys will have them for the next couple of months. So if you're getting bit, so say you're in that situation where that, that uh, channel swing comes right to that bluff wall, maybe that bluff wall's 60 feet, but you notice as you're working your jig down, or we're gonna talk about baits here towards the end, but you're working your bait down and you're getting bit in say 25 feet. And then you go to the next spot and you get bitten 25 feet, 27 feet. Look at your electronics, find where that channel swing touches the bluff walls or the shoreline and the bottom is in that 25 to 30 foot because that's where you really catch a lot of fish, okay? As far as uh, lowland reservoirs, it's that offshore hump deal, right? So find those offshore humps. You know, if you're up river or you're up an arm and you're catching them in that 25 to 27 foot range, go check those offshore humps in that same depth. A lot of those fish are gonna be in that same depth no matter, no matter where you are in the lake, okay? So those humps, those sad saddles, same thing. Use your side imaging. Look for isolated rock piles out on those, on those humps, either on the top or off to the sides. And then same thing, if you can find little creek channels that, uh, that kind of work their way in or work their way out, and you can find those breaks next to those humps or those saddles, that is key as well. River systems, delta systems, tidal systems. Um, obviously you guys know it's all about current, right? These fish, what we've learned through the years, you know, out on the California Delta or out here on the Tennessee River, these fish are different fish. They don't care necessarily as much about the current as let's say a, a Highland Reservoir fish, right? They don't mind necessarily to be in the current if they have to. They're typically more used to it because that current is going year round. So what I like to look for this time of the year is little eddies or main uh, channel swings right where the current's going to slow down. Those fish are gonna pull to that area. They're gonna sit on bottom. And again, if you can find stumps, isolated rocks in the main river, they will fish, they will sit right behind those pieces of cover and you can fish right behind them. But again, finding that, that bend in the channel swing, that's gonna slow that current down as well as fishing down closer to bottom. Those fish are gonna be down closer to bottom. The water's not moving nearly as fast lower in the water column that is up middle and towards the surface. So those fish are gonna pull to that. And then as well, any of your backwaters, uh, where your backwaters feed into that main river channel and there's those breakoffs, definitely check all of those because those fish, right as that water comes out of the back, you know, those backwaters here on the Tennessee River, I mean, they're their own lakes, really. You'd spend a week fishing back there, but as the water drops, those fish pull out and they're gonna sit right on those breaks. I don't know why I'm doing this, right? But they're gonna sit right on those breaks and uh, it makes them really easy to target. Again, there's not a lot of boat traffic. Those are key obvious spots, but more than likely you'll have them all to yourself. And then last but not least, uh, natural lakes. Natural lakes typically don't have a dam. There's not a lot of water fluctuation but again, it's all about that hard cover. It's all about that rock and it's, it's the deepest water, okay? So a lot of times there's not a, natural lakes are featureless, right? There's not a lot going on. You, in my mind, I kind of picture them as big ponds. You know, there's not a lot going on. So if I can find that deeper area, the deeper water, those fish are gonna pull to it just like they do in the other fisheries. And then I can find that rock that's, that's a plus two. The fish are going to take the best spots. The biggest fish in the lake are going to take the best spots. So that is why you have the chance or the opportunity to catch your PB or the biggest fish of your life because not only is it obvious spots, there's not a lot of boat pressure, there's not a lot of fishing pressure, and the biggest fish are there, right? Summertime, they could be up in the grass, in the backwaters, hunting around. Wintertime, they're off that break, 
on that key piece of cover. So it's really, really that simple. Again, you gotta layer up, you gotta take care of yourself, make sure you're wearing the proper equipment. But once you're all are warm and cozy, it's a lot of fun to catch these big ones. So uh, natural lakes, again, fish those rock walls, those hard pieces of cover. Uh, if there's a, a lot of docks, you can fish your dock pilings. Find those, those docks that sit in deeper water. If you're looking at your, your electronics, you're looking at your map, and you're trying to pick either this set of docks or this set of docks, look at your depth. Those deeper docks are gonna hold those, those better, bigger and better fish. Okay, so kind of breeze through that. You guys, you know, we, do, we like to go through these seasonal uh, videos for you, kind of help you guys where to start, help you guys put those puzzle pieces together. But my mindset when I'm out on the water this time of the year, I'm hunting big fish. I am thinking big fish. I am thinking uh, big bites, big fish, key opportunities, key spots, and I'm trying to catch a big one because Matt and I, between the two of us, we have caught, I mean, we've caught our fair share of big fish, but I'd say the majority of them come in that either pre-spawn or right now, right? Right now is where these fish are feeding up. You get those best spots, you give them a good presentation, you either trigger them or you trick them, but those big fish are wanting to eat. They want a easy meal. So now's the time to get out there and catch some big ones. So how do I kind of, well, I got my all my rods rigged up. I got an A rig. I got a swim bait. I got a jig, a blade bait, a speed crank, and a jerk bait. I mean, it's literally what I have on the deck. So let's kind of go through the different types of fisheries and the different baits. But as far as pond fishing, again, you're looking for that deeper water. It's really hard to beat a jig, um, either a casting jig or a pitching jig. This time of the year, I typically, if I'm fishing. Uh, deeper water, I will go with a football jig. For me, paired up with some kind of twin tail grub. Again, I'll link all this stuff down below in the video description. But for me, this is the time where I'm finding that key area, you pond fishermen, out off the dam, that deeper water, I'm firing out there and I'm dragging. I'm not doing a lot of hopping, I'm not doing a lot of shaking, just because of what we talked about earlier, right? Everything has slowed down, so you don't wanna be that that uh, special jig down there, <laughs> hopping and swimming all over the place when everything else is just kind of creeping along. So do your nice slow drags. You hit that chunk rock, you can kind of shake, pop it up. But again, you're shore based, so you don't want to be uh, getting hung up all the time. So a jig is great. If you want, you can go with uh, a Ned rig. No, I grabbed one here for you guys. A Ned, rig, a Ned rig, but a tip this time of the year, I like to throw the Ned rig on a football style head versus the traditional Ned head. For me, it just comes through that stuff better, doesn't get hung up nearly as easy, easily, and uh, I just have a lot of uh, luck with that football style Ned head. On the flip side, if you want to fish something aggressive, go with that jerk bait. Specifically, that Vision 110, either the, the Junior Plus One or the Vision 110 Plus Two. Now, the reason I'm giving you two different options, you know the depth of your pond, right? You know that it's either deep or it's shallow and you knew, know how deep it is. Uh, the thing with a jerk bait, as this water cools, you can get real slow with your cadence, right? Rip, rip, let it sit. But knowing the depth of your pond being stuck on the shore, not being able to retrieve your bait if it gets hung up, you now can fish uh, a depth and know that you're not gonna get hung up on bottom. So uh, if I can give you one, it's that 110 Junior Plus One, that thing is magical. You guys heard us talk about that the last few months. Uh, but again, you can adjust your depth on your different jerk baits depending on how deep of the water you're actually fishing. Highland Reservoirs, Lowland Reservoirs, that's primarily uh, what I grew up fishing, and right now it's go time with the speed crank. If you're on that lowland reservoir and you have, oh, what I got going on here? You have a lot more of the, saddles and humps. So 
Highland Reservoir, you're gonna have a lot more sheer breakoffs. You're gonna have a lot more, like I said, river channels and secondary points and main lake points. Um, we're gonna talk about that here shortly, but lowland reservoirs, it's, it's usually less abrupt. So I will fi find some of those island tops out in that main body near those creek channels are that 12 to let's say 18, 20 foot range. That's when I'm throwing that speed crank. That's where I'm trying to trigger those fish. Burn, 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 pause. You guys, you guys, we've talked about it for several years now. These fish, even though the water is cold, you can still tap in and trick these fish or trigger, not trick, trigger these fish into eating even though they're not really wanting to move. When you bring something fast by them and it deflects and you get a directional change or a pause, it kind of backs up in their face, they have to eat it. So hands down, my one, two punch is going to be the A-Rig and the Speed Crank. Uh, this is my one, two punch for covering water and finding those fish. Again, you can trigger these fish, you can get them to eat when they don't want to eat, and you can catch some of the biggest fish in the entire lake. Same thing with the Highland Reservoir. You know, if you, you can fish the crankbait, you can fish the A-Rig. If you need to slow down on either of these types of fisheries, that's where I'm going with the jig. Or the big swim bait. If you're one of those guys that wants to get into swim bait fishing or you already have the gear, now is the time to pick those key pieces of cover on that island top or off that secondary point or main lake point and throw the swim bait. Either the Savage Gear or the Huddleston, uh, they both swim great and you're just creeping them on bottom. Go as slow as you possibly can. I don't wanna get this thing hung up. I'm not in very deep water, but if you're just so slow, just enough for this bait to be, that tail back there just to be slightly kicking. Again, you're not triggering, you're trying to trick those fish, but lucky for you, that Savage Gear and that Huddleston swim amazing and have put so many double digit size fish in the boat. So if you want to slow down, go with that jig, go with that swim bait, but remember to target those key pieces of cover on that main lake point on that high high spot, that hump or the saddle, and then remember to check those edges where that water breaks off to that deep water. And then last but not least, uh, well, let's talk about, um, that we talked about the jig and that, I mean, if you need to, you can really go down and, and really fish that Ned rig like we talked about, uh, throwing that, that little football head Ned rig. That works really good if you have to slow down. I'm gonna be honest, when it's cold out and you have to bundle up, and you're sitting there dragging that jig or you're dragging that Ned rig, it's not nearly as warm when you're power fishing, when you're, when you're casting and winding and pausing and rod twitching, it, burning those calories keeps you warm and it's, it's, you really notice how cold it is when you slow down and you finesse fish or you're throwing the big swim bait. Okay, uh, natural lakes, we kind of talked about that already. I'm gonna give you the same baits, okay? The, uh, the crank, the A-Rig, the swim bait. On the flip side, a blade bait. Blade bait works good. Around your, your high spots, your island tops, that sort of stuff, your humps out in the main body, a lot of times in your highland reservoirs, you get this real rocky type shoreline and that blade bait just doesn't work. You're always hung up. But if you're a guy that's offshore and you're fishing those high spots or those saddles, and uh, it's just mud down there, there's not a lot of rock, go with that blade bait. It's just one of those baits that was definitely designed for fishing cold water. And it's just a real subtle, just a real subtle yo-yo, just enough to feel that bait flutter, you know, vibrate three or four times and fall back down. Vibrate, fall back down. You gotta hop it and it's just heavy, they're on it. So if you're around that key, those key areas, and depending on any of your fisheries, right? Uh, really, um, if you're around mud or small chunk rock, pea gravel, that blade bait works really, really well. And then, so natural lakes, we kind of talked about that. As far as your delta systems and your river systems, again, finding those current seams, finding those current breaks, those eddies, that backwater where it's a little bit deeper, 
Sometimes when they draw this water down, you'll get some areas that have some deeper holes or hollows, and those fish are gonna congregate to that. Uh, you can really pick them off with the blade bait or jig. If you're fishing the main river and you're in the current, look for those stumps or those current breaks, the bends in the river. And again, swim bait, A-rig, jig, that sort of thing will really uh, increase your odds of having a great day out on the water. So many big fish are caught this time of the year on the A-rig, the speed crank, the jig, and the swim bait. It's just a big fish type of year, time of year, and those baits are the types of baits that will get you those big bites. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. We'll try to get those as soon as possible. But uh, starting next video, again, we're firing up those buyer's guides for you to help you guys uh, get the best bang for your buck, depending on hard baits or, or what. We have all sorts of categories for you coming up. But again, seven days a week, we got some awesome, awesome buyer's guides shot for you. And uh, really looking forward to that. But uh, down below in the video description, I will link the different styles of baits that we talked about, my favorite colors, and the different uh, types of fisheries that where they best kind of uh, fit that, uh, that criteria. But uh, guys, like I said, we appreciate you. We appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.